Right, so today was European Championship Time Trial Day. Now, normally, it's very rare to actually have the same course for both men's, women's, under 23s. So, I thought I'd go through the time differences between the different categories and power, etc, etc. Quite an interesting comparison, especially between the men's and the under 23s. So, uh, first of all, this is the, the men's results here. So, obviously, this is the fastest category, 30, 18. Uh, is the timing got a Strava segment? Timing is slightly different. Um, unfortunately, these top three don't upload uh, to Strava, but Alex Dowsett does, so we can analyze his data. Um, so yeah, pretty impressive ride by Stefan Kung. 51 kilometers an hour on that course is unbelievable, considering it was pretty hilly, as we'll see. Uh, then we have the women's, which I've literally been doing nothing today, just watched all of these. Uh, the women's, Anna van der Bregen destroyed everyone, pretty much. Um, these two riders basically just did a team time chart. They were drafting. It was an absolute joke. Uh, but 34 minutes, so you can see sort of four minute difference. Um, and then if we go to the under 23s, you can see the time is actually really, really quick. So this bloke, Andreas Lenkensun, would have come, uh, he did a 30.58, so he would have come like fourth, which is pretty impressive. Um, so, I mean, obviously there's not all the big hitters. Van Aert isn't here. Obviously, Remco's not here. So there's a couple people missing uh, who probably would place, but higher up. Uh, but, you know, even so. Very, very impressive ride. We've got my favourite lad, Tom Pickock. He did upload, and so did Stefan Bissiger. Uh, but anyway, we'll go over to Strava, and uh, we'll see. So this is the segment here. Um, fair amount of elevation difference, uh, and you can see it's pretty hilly. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll load everyone's files up. Um, and then also the women's time is here is 34.58. Um, so unfortunately, Juliet Labus came sixth place, so it's not really ideal because obviously the time gaps are... A pretty significant like a two minute time gap isn't really what we want to see um but anyway uh so first we'll go to, over to alex dowsett's power now if you don't know about dowsett he um generally does a lot less power than you'd expect so 420 normalized obviously very impressive but not mental like not for the child like kung would do like 440 or something and you'll see you'll see the power of some of these blokes um here like he did he did a 450 or something and 3120 so like a minute slower um, than Dowsett, so you can see he's not like doing mega mega power, um, you know, compared to other people potentially. Uh, but yeah, pretty pretty hilly course. Um, you can see it's pretty stochastic power, lots of downhills, turns. Um, the last part doing 400 watts. He was riding an S Works shiv with a POC helmet and was not doing anything that sponsors would have liked. But anyway, fair play to Dowsett. Um, so you can see punch pretty hard on the climb, six and a half watts per kilo up this climb. 37k an hour. Um, again, it was a fast, it was like fast climbing, so they most of them only had a single ring. Kane's very good as well, 97. Uh, so yeah, pretty impressive by Dowson. But what's per kilo wise? Five watts per kilo for half an hour. Like, that's not very impressive. Like, I don't want to be rude. Obviously, he's a world class time trials, but his power isn't like mental. Um, so we'll go over to Stefan Bissiger now. Again, normalized 423. So similar to Dowson, to be fair, 48k an hour. Um, um, again, you'll see it's a pretty punchy power file but you know the the power is similar and you know the guys who are winning the under 23s are like elite already like under 23 is just sort of like a category to like gain race experience rather than fitness which is why i think now you're seeing a lot of people sign from junior because they got the numbers out the juniors and they don't need to do it or signing like young under 23 not winning until the last year uh so yeah pretty impressive again you'll see they sort of climbed to six six to seven watts per kilo normally uh, we're going to go to Pickock Stadium, like seven watts per kilo for this 50 seconds. Um, obviously, they came in with quite a lot of speed. Um, but yeah, so if we go over to Tom Pickock's ride, it, it, he's obviously significantly smaller, 56 kilos. People have been arguing about his weight. Um, Some will call me an idiot about my last video about him. But, you know, uh, we learn to forgive on this channel. Um, but again, you'll see he, he was doing sort of like 7.4 watts per kilo up the climbs uh, because obviously he's lighter and so... I don't know, maybe his pace strategy was wrong, I don't know. Uh, but overall, he did uh, 5.4 watts per kilo for 37 minutes. But if we look at the the actual lap, he did 6.2 for half an hour, which is like more like, wow. Um, but obviously, watts per kilo is actually watts per CDA, and he has a very, very low CDA. I'll, try, I'll put a video of, I'll put the, the positions at the end of the video. Um, but Pickock's got a really, really good one. Um, so again, the last bit, you can see 360 watts. But it goes to show if you're aero, you can, you can get around pretty well. Um, and Pickock obviously is a small lad, but doing well. So you, in general, you can basically see uh, that you don't, like under 23s have the numbers for sure, um, and that they can compete, you know, in the highest level, like most of them would come top 10 in Europeans. Okay, it's not the best field I've ever seen, but 
These are all world tour until Bike 8 lad, he had a class ride to be fair, Justin Wolf. He was on some old Scott with like, you know, just a normal front brake and stuff, like no integrated stuff, but mint position uh, and only a minute and a half down, which isn't isn't too bad on Stefan Kuhn. Uh, Stefan Kuhn, I think, is the new TT lad for me. He does the classics well as well, third and world champs, uh, and then ninth in Hetney's Blatt this year as well. So anyway, cheers for watching. Actually, we'll go, we'll go over the women's for Juliette Lewis as well, because um, it would be rude not to, really. Uh, but again, I said it's a bit annoying because obviously she's quite far down. So she did 260 watts. We've got um, Lizzie Banks 290. Um, so obviously, some of these numbers aren't super high, but then obviously a, a lot of them don't weigh much either. Um, so um, I think Juliette Leboose is 55 kilos, so similar to pick up. So she's bang out like five watts per kilo for half an hour, which is pretty pretty solid, especially obviously with the, all the gaps and stuff. Um, but yeah, 42k an hour is a pretty arrow to be honest. Um, but I think the winner, Van der Bregen, is 56 kilos. She's probably adding like 20 watts, 30 watts to that, um, maybe more, um, might be more arrow as well. Um, but yeah, it's definitely pretty interesting. If we look at the winner of the, the women, so Anna Van der Bregen with 34 minutes would have finished like, um, she, oh no, she would have finished like 20th or something. So it's it's not bad. It's not bad. She would have been a fair few men. Um, but yeah, I hope, I hope you find this interesting. Lizzie Banks, I think, is a little bit heavier, 62 kilos. 61.7 actually, um, FTP 297, similar, similar-ish um, numbers, it will be about 5 watts per kilo, a little less, um, for 41.8, very nice cadence as well, 102. Uh, so anyway, cheers for watching, hope you did enjoy this little vid, um, very, I'll try and get back on the upload schedule, I've got a big, big training camp Wednesday to Sunday, so uploads could be questionable, but after that, we'll whack them out, and uh, yeah, tour's obviously on, um, and I've got got a special announcement I'm gonna I'm gonna have in the next couple of days. Fortunately, I like threw my phone into a door and uh, it's smashed. But when I get my actual phone back, um, we're gonna have an interesting upload. Might be something to do with um with it, it would tick and talk potentially uh, and some uploads there. But anyway, 